Happy Wednesday. How you doing? Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart and getting smarter every day. I am extremely good looking. Everything I do succeeds. Everything works out for me. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is a wonderful and anointed prayer partner. A great prayer partner. Say that every day. Every day. Go to my website, increasenow.com. I mean, don't take yourself too seriously, folks. Amen. God could replace you in a heartbeat. Amen. I just praise God that he allows me to do what I do. And he helps me. And I just praise God for that. Amen. Go to my website, increasenow.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be part of this ministry. Amen. Partner with this ministry. I believe that if you partner with the ministry, you should have access to the minister. All of our partners do. My phone number is right there. If you need prayers answered today, call me because uh, I am always ready, willing, and able to get your prayers answered for you. A great prayer partner is somebody who can get your prayers answered for you. Now, I'm not the only one that can do that. There's other people. If you can get Kenneth Copeland to be your prayer partner, he can get your prayers answered for you. He might be a little hard to get on the phone, but if you can get a hold of him, he will get your prayers answered. So I'm not the only one that can do this, but I'm probably the only one who is available. Amen. I make myself available. I love to pray with God's people. My phone rings all day long. Don't call me before nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. And my phone rings till midnight. It was ringing late last night. People calling that just needed somebody to pray with them. And that's what I do. And I praise God that, that somebody is available. I'm always available. And believe me, I can get you through anything. Because this is what I do. Amen. Glory to God. Also, when you do your offerings and donations today, call me because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you and your offering that God told us to speak. Not many people do that either. And that's why a lot of these offerings and donations aren't blessed. Make sure your tithe is blessed. That somebody is speaking that blessing over your tithe. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, I want to talk to you today. We're talking about, we started this series yesterday about gifts of healing. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And one of the gifts are is gifts of of healing. Gifts. G-I-F-T-S. It's plural. There's more than one gift. Well, yesterday we started talking about this, and we talked about, uh, we just kind of did an introduction. We're still working on the introduction to this, folks. This is such a, a great subject. Uh, the gifts of healing can come either, number one, by the anointing or by faith. Now, if you are anointed with gifts of healing, it still takes faith to operate in that gift. The Bible tells us that if your gift is prophecy, let the people prophesy according to their faith. Therefore, you have to operate in any gift that you have, whether it's the gift of discernment, uh, the gift of uh, interpretation of tongues, or uh, the gift of, of faith, any anything Anything that you, any gift that you have, you have to operate in that gift by faith. And the gifts of healing are no different. You have to operate in these gifts by faith. And I want to tell you a little story right now about how this happened to me. I was sitting in a used car lot in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, three weeks after I got saved. And I was reading in Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, and I read us down to the end of the chapter, and it said, Jesus was talking, 
Now this is after he rose from the dead. He was getting ready to be taken up into heaven. And he's, he's charging his followers and his disciples. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be lost. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I read that. Now, keep in mind, I am reading the Bible for the first time as a spirit-filled believer. I had read a lot in the Bible. I hadn't really studied the Bible, but I knew a lot about the Bible because I grew up in church and I grew up going to Sunday school and I had all the lessons and I knew all the stuff. But I had never read the Bible as a spirit-filled believer. I had read, I started with Matthew. I read Matthew, now I'm in Mark. And I'm reading Mark. Second chapter that I've, ever, that I've really read read as a spirit-filled believer. And I read, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And when I read that, something happened to me. Something, I can't explain it. The lights didn't go off. I just but I did have an epiphany, an epiphany. I guess maybe you could say the lights did go off. I felt different. I felt, I said, you know what? And I'm sitting there reading it and I read that 10 times. I could not take my eyes off of it. It's like when you see something, you can't take your eyes off of it. And I looked at that. And I just, I couldn't look away from it. And I kept reading it. These signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I thought to myself, I'm one of them that believes. And if I'm one of them that believes, I should be able to lay my hand on somebody and they would get healed. They'd get better. Now, also keep in mind, I had never seen anybody get healed. I had never seen a sick person get prayed for. I had never even seen it on TV, although I had heard about it. See, in, in the TV that we had, they never showed anything like that. And there was, we didn't have any Christian TV up in Wisconsin. I had never seen that. But I thought, if this is true, if it's true, I should be able to do that because I am one of them that believes. And if I'm one of them that believes, I should be able to do that. Does that make sense? Well, I'm sitting there going, whoa, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be fun just to touch somebody and boom, they get healed? My good, I knew Jesus had done that. Now that I knew. I didn't know much, but I knew that. So a little bit later, here comes a guy out of the service department. And you've a lot of you have heard this story before. Some of you haven't because some of you are new to this ministry. And he's limping. He says, I won't be at work tomorrow. He says, I blew out my knee. He says, I got to go to the doctor. He says, my knee's all swollen. I can't even get my, hardly get my pants on. And he's limping so bad. I walked over to him. I'm one of them that believes. I walked over to him and I said, do you believe God can heal you? He looks up at me and he goes, yeah. I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command that knee to be healed. Took my hand off him right away because he was he didn't like being touched. I said, okay, you're all set. He turned around, went back in the service department. I went back to my desk and I went, oh my goodness. What did I just do? 
This guy knows everybody in town that I know. We lived in a town of 3,000 people, folks. Everybody knew everybody. You walk down the street, you know almost everybody. And I had only lived there less than a year, six months. And I still knew almost everybody in town. And Mary was born there and grew up there. So she did know everybody in town. So finally, after half an hour, I walked back into the service department. I said, how are you doing? He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, but the swelling in my knee is going down. I said, okay. I walked back out to the office. He came out a half an hour later. It was time to leave. It was five o'clock. He said, look at my knee. He said, it's all, it's all cured. He said, it's all better. He said, I'll be at work tomorrow. And he's swinging his knee around and I'm going, okay. He walked out the door and I went, ah! God had done a miracle through me. After that, everybody I touched and said, be healed in Jesus' name, got healed. I mean to tell you, it just went through town like you wouldn't believe. <clears throat> People didn't know me that well. Here I am, somebody who had just come to town and people were getting healed. And even unbelievers would come by my office if they were sick or if they were injured, they'd get healed. One man whose eyes were blind got his blind eyes open. He got healed of blindness, cancer, heart disease, all kinds of stuff. It was just amazing. What well, an just in terrible, incredible injury. One guy with a severe, severely damaged heart after a heart attack. His his heart was made perfect. It's been going on ever since. That is the gift of healing, folks. It works. It works. It works. But and I had to. But I just I just got to the point where I believed. Everybody I touched would get healed, and they did. They're still doing it. We went down to, we left for Bible college because, uh, and we the first time we were, first few weeks we were in Bible college, I was playing softball with some of the other students, and a guy swinging a bat blew out his knee. And he's laying on the ground screaming and crying, oh, he because there's nothing more painful, I guess, than a blown out knee. I've never had one. But I've been around some people. Everybody's standing there praying for him and praying and praying and praying and pray. a lot of them praying in tongues. How many of you know that ain't the right way to pray for a sick person? And after they stopped praying, they kind of moved back and I walked over and stood over them and held my hand out toward them. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command that knee to be healed. I stepped back. He started, he goes, you're not going to believe this. The pain's going away. Within 10 minutes, he's back in the game. His knee is totally healed. And he's back in the game. Folks, I mean, that's the way it's always worked. I do it over the phone. I say, be healed in Jesus' name. They get healed. I do it over the phone all the time. People, brain dead people healed. Children dying in intensive care units healed right over the phone. Cancer healed right over the phone. I'm telling you what, God's word works. The gifts of healing. We're going to continue this tomorrow. I want you to start with this. I want you, at least if, I'm telling you, people are going to get healed watching this video. You need healing today, you call me. You need your prayers answered today, you call me. Especially you do your offerings and donations today. Call me because I want to speak the blessing over you. And when I speak the blessing over you, that heals your finances. I love you very much. I'm out of time. Glory to God. Have a wonderful Wednesday. And I will see you back here again tomorrow.